like and subscribe to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I like well, thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
So it finished in second to Kendall, uh, or Frank there. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> He's pretty much dominated that series. Yeah, he has. I mean, I, there's probably no better person to finish second to in the series, but um, we definitely, uh, our goal was to win the championship, and, and we felt like we could have, um, you know, kind of mid-season, a few things needed to go our way or that they're winning his way, just kind of race of luck, but, um, you know, I felt like when trying to me really strong cards every week, and, and we ended up, I think we, we finished uh, side by side with like, you know, race after race throughout the season. It seemed like we were always neck and neck battling with them. So with the truck series, you run you ran some races last year. We did. We ran three races at the at the end of the season. We started out with Talladega, and then with the Phoenix and Homestead. Okay. So is this just a, a one season sponsorship deal, or is this a multiple year? Yeah, as of right now, we're just going to run uh, this season in the truck series. Um, you know, eight one one called before you did. Mad Bates and Diamond Equipment have been uh, phenomenal in helping me get this far and. and uh, Help me get the season kicked off. You know, like every racer, we're always looking for for some more sponsorship to uh, to do a little bit more than, than what we plan on this year. I'd always love to get the super late model or not the car any chance I get. So how how did you fare out in uh, Daytona then? Daytona, um, we were running really well. Uh, we had to do the, the rain out and qualifying. Uh, we had to start twenty second, and, and I knew we had a really strong Mad Bates Toyota Tundra all weekend in practice. I was really happy with it in the draft. And uh, kind of sat back and rode. Uh, nature of pack drafting it really wasn't a place to go um, for a while. Then we were able to get on the outside line with Timothy Peters leading it and uh, worked our way up to seventh with about 20, 25 to go. Um, our line on the outside, uh, Ross Chastain pushed Parker Clearman into, the, into my right rear, turned him into my right rear, and um, I hit the wall pretty hard head on and uh, got into the night, what we thought was going to be a really good night. Uh, well, it sounds like it started out pretty good. At least you had a decent truck. Yeah, we had, we had a great truck. I was really, uh, really pleased with it. And uh, I really didn't have any complaints uh, all weekend. Went to the test earlier in December and, and uh, learned a lot there. And then we were able to carry that over into the race weekend. And, you know, I, I think we're going to come out with just the strongest truck, just the stronger truck. And uh, hopefully, hopefully get that top five we were looking for at Martinsville. Yeah, speaking of that, have you been to Martinsville before? I've never been. Um, it's definitely been on um, near the top of the list of tracks that I want to race on, and I haven't, haven't got the chance to uh, to race there yet. But I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> where you where are you from? You never made a late model race out there. I didn't. I'm, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. So we ran uh, super late models. Um, started out running uh, pro late models in the Kenton Series, Kentucky, Tennessee, Indiana, and then. Uh, Started out at CRA, so we ran a lot, a lot again in Indiana, and ended up that way. So I never made it to Martinsville. Okay. Now, do you have uh, somebody who can give you some insight about the place? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you know, my crew chief Mark Red, he's um, been crew chief in the truck series for a long time and in NASCAR for, for a really long time, and, and has a lot of experience. And, and uh, I think Martinsville is a place that he's been really strong at in the past, um, and I think it will really suit my driving style. Um, quite a bit. I mean, you know, I love short track. Anytime I get to go to a short track, um, I'm I'm really excited. So, you know, I look I look for us to have a decent a decent or a strong show in there. Yeah, it's definitely a tough. It can be a tough little bull ring. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely. There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of beating and banging at Martinsville, and I think especially in the truck series, um, you know, nobody gives too much, and everybody there's a lot of uh, putting up some bumper to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Last year was pretty interesting with Harvick calling out uh, Childress's grandkids. That was pretty funny. Yeah, they definitely got, they definitely got a lot of people. <laughs> so who, who is your spotter? Do you have uh, somebody just to somebody in the shop, or do you have somebody that's just going to spot for you all year? Oh, uh, yeah, David Green. Um, he started okay. for me at the end of my arc season last year for the last race in Kansas, and then did the truck stuff for me last year, and, and spotted the Daytona, so... Um, he'll be at every race that he can be working with his tough schedule. So um, he'll definitely be at Martinsville, he said. And, you know, he's been a huge help in my transition into the truck. Um, just with the fact that somebody that I communicate with and, and that's been in the seat before. Um, you know, there's a lot of spotters out there that have never been in the position. But uh, he's been there in, uh, in those where I'm coming from. So uh, he, we seem to work really well together. 
then I hope you know, hopefully he can make it to all of our races this season. Yeah, I think it definitely makes a difference when you have somebody that has driven before because they, they, they understand the feeling you have, you know, how much you rely on them and so forth. And David's got a lot of experience, so I think that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. And he was, you know, it's even bigger at, um, well, it's big everywhere, but at Super Speedway, it's just knowing that what's going on around you, he was, he was phenomenal with that. Yeah, yeah, I was listening to some of them during Daytona, and, I mean, and they don't ever shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and I like somebody that talks a lot to me. I, I run a, an arena car, which is basically like the mini cups that you guys, that you probably ran there. Um, and I just, that's just, I don't know if I could, that's a lot to do to be a spotter. No, I mean, no. there's a lot of decision making you're making for the car. Yeah. The, uh, I, when I was running late model, I, I didn't mind talking a lot while I'm racing even. You know, and it didn't bother me. The more information they could give me, the better. I mean, there were times that something would happen in front of me before the spotter had a chance. Boom, I was already through it. And they're sitting there and say, how the hell did you do that? <laughs> you know. But, so when I do spotting, and, I, and, and you know yourself there, Mason, that you are going to want to know how much time you want to listen to that person and how much time you don't want to listen to the person. Because sometimes you want to concentrate on what you're doing, and then there are times that, Maybe you just need to be talked to to be relaxed, also. No, that's exactly right, and I think that's what you know. It comes from having not only an experienced father and someone that's been there, but just having a good relationship with that person. They they can kind of learn um, when when they should and should talk, or when they should and should let you go, and uh, and when they do need to start talking. So I think that's that's all a relationship that you build, and and, and it's the trust that you have with that guy you know, that's looking over you. So the best the best father you can have, I think. You know, will definitely help, and um, you know he's he's been great so far. Now who does he spot for on the Cup side? Um, JGR, so he does a little bit with uh, quite a bit of bottom of the body, I believe. Cool. Well, they, did you say you were coming to Martinsville to race? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's running the whole schedule. Cool. Um, in that case, we'll have to try to run into you and say hello to you. Yeah, definitely. And if, Jeff, if you don't have a spotter, let me know. I'll, I'll already be there. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> we'll just never tell him which Mason will call him. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll go up to him. What was your name again? <laughs> <laughs> Mason. I just, I just know he's the eight one one guy. The eight one one guy. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, do do you like Martinsville running there a lot? No, he's he's never been. There. Never been there. Mm -mm. I haven't been there yet. Oh, ah. yeah. Uh, make sure you go talk to Timothy Peters. I definitely will. Yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely somebody that's got a lot of laughs around here. He's very good. Yeah, he's from that area. Um, I think he won, what, two years ago there? Yes, sir. I think so. Something like that. Yeah, so yeah, talking to him, and he usually runs pretty good out there. Um, I usually run into him. He usually spots me before I spot him. <laughs> that's sort of sad. <laughs> But uh, that, that's always good. Now, we're going to make sure we work you good this time. Since, since we, we're going to probably run you for a half hour, I think. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe an hour. Let's do the whole show with him. <laughs> I don't know if he's got that much to talk about. Well, hey, we can always do the, the we can, question. We did cut him short last time. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, we didn't even get... Have you talked to him about food yet? No, no, no. Now, now I know you've not just done so much traveling so far. What have you found to be some of the places you'd like to eat at when you've been traveling? Well, I am pretty lucky. Um, <laughs> my uncle, uh, my uncle Bruce, he uh, comes to all the racetracks and uh, with us, or just about all the races. And he's pretty known. Uh, he was pretty known in the in the garage area in the Arc Series last year for for cooking. Everybody knew which trailer we stopped at. So I eat a, eat a lot of a lot of home cooked meals on the road. So it's, it's actually nice living on my own. I, we'll definitely we'll go definitely, by. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're gonna go visit for sure. Then. <laughs> when does he usually cook on race day? Is that about? <laughs> 11 o'clock on, on Saturday? Oh, uh, we're, we're big on steak sandwiches. Steak oh, sandwiches. Oh, man, after my heart. No, I, we used to do a lot of pork. Potatoes, can't eat it. <laughs> we used to do a lot of pork chop sandwiches, too, when we were cooking up. Um, we'd go to get these big, huge, thick ones. I mean, inch and a half thick pork chops to put in a sandwich now. Oh, yeah. So Mason, does, did your dad race or, or somebody else in your family race? Are you the first one or what? Actually, uh, my uncle Bruce did. Um, he raced a little bit. Um, he quit before I was born, 
So I really didn't even know that he raced until I got going into it, and then I kind of <laughs> found that out. Um, but the way it worked out, I ended up getting to race with him. So I mean, he got back in the car when I was racing Baby Grands, and, and we ran quite a few races together. And, and uh, so that was that was pretty cool. My dad has been, you know, with me since I started racing quarter midgets, but uh, he was never raced before. But you know, I think he's as hooked on it as I am now. <laughs> That's pretty cool to get the race against your uncle. That's cool. Yeah. Now, who who won? Well, <laughs> normally, I normally did, but I think he'll, his argument to that is they always they always gave me the better car. So. <laughs> uh, did he did he ever beat you? Oh yeah, I mean he, he beat me before. It, the way it worked out is um, I actually ran a different division than him, but on certain nights they run us together. So okay, okay. Wasn't racing directly against him, other than a very few times. I you still you still got bragging rights though, right? Oh, I, I brag, yeah, that's true. Whether I want or not, I'll always brag to <laughs> Stress the truth a little bit. Oh, yeah, there you go. We'll have to stir something up when we get up there. Well, so I heard Mason was the better driver. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're known for stirring up stuff. Speaking of stirring and stirring up, did you, did you have a race last weekend? No, uh, no we're off till the 21st, 22nd. Oh, okay. Scott here is usually into stirring stuff up at, at his arena car <laughs> racing stuff. So hey man, you gotta have fun. Yeah, that's the key to it. That's why we're doing it is have fun. So do you have an embarrassment moment in racing? Well, I've had a few embarrassing moments. I don't know what my that's tough to say what the most embarrassing <laughs> one is. Um, well, if you got two first place ties, go for those. We'll, we'll, we 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 don't mind having extras. <laughs> um, I'd say probably most embarrassing would be, I'd say back in the baby grand days, I was leading uh, probably the biggest race of the season, and I had drove him from the back of the field to the front and was leading the race and managed to, um, yeah, I hit the wall coming off turn four, and I was like, uh, second place guy drove underneath me, and I was coming down the flat stretch with the white flag out, and I... Oh. And so I drove back underneath them getting into getting into turn one and uh, took the lead back and I was like, you know, I thought I had saved it. I was like, all right, I'm doing pretty good. And then I, then I looped it off turn four. So that was... <laughs> <laughs> That's I, a I, very good one. Now, when, uh, who, who inspires you nowadays as far as who you look up to in any of the upper series? Well, I've always, I've always kind of... Um, looked up to Carl Edwards. He actually raced Baby Grands um, back when he was coming up and won a Baby Grand uh, championships. And I did the same, so I thought that was pretty cool where he came from, kind of from the same start that I did and made it to where he is today. Yeah, I've talked to a couple of, not his sponsors, but sponsors in general, and, and Carl does a great job with being overall a good person and you know represents the sponsors well. So, I mean, that's a pretty good guy to, to, to look up to. Yeah, absolutely. Now, for, for all the women out there, are you single or married? Well, I'm not married, <laughs> but I, yeah, I have a girlfriend. Um, I'm, actually gonna, I'm, I'm actually headed to Phoenix. I'm driving our show truck to Phoenix in the next couple of days um, for a uh, show for 811 and uh, going to get to hang out with her, unfortunately. She lives in Tennessee, which is where I found my new to North Carolina a year ago. Well, oh, whereabouts in Tennessee? Um, Brentwood, Tennessee, so it's a little bit of south of Nashville. Okay, I'll have to go look that one up because I was uh, born uh, around Man uh, uh, Murfreesboro. Oh yeah, it's probably I'd say forty minutes drive from Murfreesboro. Oh, okay, and I don't know if they actually claimed it as Murfreesboro or Coffee County, but. Somewhere I got a birth certificate telling me something about it. <laughs> so, what uh, do you have a timeline for your future plans in racing that you're trying to adhere to or trying to formulate? You know, um, you know obviously I'm I'm going to move as fast as I can, um, try to get there. Um, just kind of, I guess, whenever the opportunity and sponsorship come our way. Um, you know, when I move up, obviously, but, um, you know, I'd like to run the, the truck series for for a year to two years and then, you know, hopefully move nationwide and, and cup 
move from there. But uh, ultimately, Cup's obviously my, my goal and, and what I, where I want to be. But you know, hopefully, hopefully the opportunities get sent my way and I get to move up that way. Well, just to tell you a short story, a young man by the name of Dakota Armstrong, uh, I'd say probably about three or four years ago, was talking with him, had him on the show. He was trying to get into trucks and ran into him in Martinsville, talked with him and talked with some other people and then uh, for too long he's now doing the trucks and I think he's now a Nationwide too now, isn't he? Yeah, I think. Yes, yeah, I ran quite a few races with him, different stuff in with brother. Yep. So I mean, it it can move along quickly for you, and it's just uh, being in the right place and finding the right people. Yeah, you just don't ever know. Yeah. Do you have a, a formulated long term term plan with eight one one? Uh we don't. Um, it's kind of it's kind of a year by year um, thing. They've been great. Um, we started out with Tennessee eight one one. Um, they got on board, I'd say, about three years ago on my super late model stuff, and then uh, we've just accumulated a few more states in, in each year, and uh, I think, you know, think we've got about 15, 15, 20 states on board right now. Um, obviously, there's, there's an 811 center in every state, and um, so we're trying to, trying to go after every, every 811 center that we can, but um, they've been huge in helping me out in my career, and, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue our partnership with each other past this year. No, that's good. Now, do you do you have a, a seasoned driver that you can that you've gone to that has kind of helped you, or that you go ask questions, like a Carl Edwards or or something? Yeah, you know, just um, in different series, uh, you know, there's obviously that, that guy that's usually pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. Last year, even though I was running for the championship against Frank Kimmel, I was um, he was always very willing to um, give me advice anytime I needed to. I went to a lot of brand new racetracks. And, so he was always right there in the garage and, and it was made a ton of last ball was racetrack that we've been to and about the car. So for last year, you know, he was definitely one of those guys and, and he will be this year too. You know, he's run some truck stuff and, and nationwide cup stuff in his career and, and been to, you know, I'd say probably all the racetracks that I'm gonna go to. And he's actually running out of the Wintron out of the Wintron shop. He's doing his arc stuff for Wintron racing this year too, so we're under the same roof this year. Oh, that's pretty cool. You've raced a few tracks now. What what have you found to be your more favorite track to go to? Um, I'd say, you know, this far, I mean, obviously this year I'm going to have a lot of brand new racetracks. I've never been to Bristol, never been to Dover, never been to a lot of the mile and a half. Um, so it'll be, I'll probably, probably have a different answer for you after this season. But, um, you know, I love, I love high bank short tracks. Um, Salem, Indiana, Winchester, Indiana, those are those are two of my favorite tracks to go ride in after car or super late mile lap. So what was Daytona like then, being your first time? No, well, I guess you ran Daytona in the ARCA car then, right? I did. I ran Daytona in Talladega in the ARCA car, and then ran uh, Talladega in the truck. So I, I've been there and uh, at least seen the track, and, and they've, you know, quite a few laps there, and, and got to test the truck there. So um, I knew I knew what I, what I was walking into this year, but um, you know, I, I do. I like that. Uh, I like to receive my racing. It's different. It's, it's like a big chest match, but like at 200 miles an hour. So it's. Uh, so it kind of puts a twist on things, but it's it's a lot of strategy, and, and that's another reason it's so important going back to having a good spotter is you have to know what's going on, and you have to know um, what the other person's move is going to be before they know what it is, so that you can pick the right line or, or roll with the right with the right pack. How different did the Arca cars compare to the trucks drive? I mean, is the trucks more stable or less stable? The truck the trucks less stable. Um, Obviously, you're punching a really big hole through the air, and there's there's a lot less back there where the truck is and compared to a car. So um, they they want to move around a lot more, especially when you get in traffic and when you get choppy air. Um, they 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 like to move around. I saw it, it was big at Homestead, and it was it was really big at uh, Daytona. We actually from the test the when we went back, we tried to we came back with a slower steering box just to help me out so that I could make a little bit bigger movements on the steering wheel without doing so much to the truck. Um, it's it's really a big uh, transition. I had to test the Arca car for Winch on um, their Arca car um, in December, and they went in January to test the truck. And first round of the truck, I came back in. And I was like, sorry, guys, that might not have been the best time because I was probably moving around a little bit more than I should have been, um, just from the being so much less stable. Yeah, 
you know, people don't realize how hard it is to be smooth on the wheel because you know the least amount you move the steering wheel. Which I'm like you, I like a slower steering box myself. Yeah, especially in like a big track like that, if you move the steering wheel a little bit, every every time you move it, it's you're struggling off speed. And, um, it's magnified because the track is so big, so that's huge to be really smooth and, and as straight as possible. Now, what track coming up are you looking forward to the most, or, or, or are you excited to go go to that you haven't been to? I think Bristol. Um, I'm, Bristol has been probably number one on my list of the tracks and NASCAR runs um, since I've been racing. So I'm, I'm excited to go to Bristol, and uh, you know, ho hopefully we can have a strong run. I think that's going to be right up my alley. And do you do any uh, simulation racing to, to try to get, I mean, because the simulations, man, are so close to the actual track, you can gain a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of laps. Yeah, I do, uh, a little bit, especially when we go to road courses. Road courses are huge. Um, I like to go on a simulator. Um, last year, for we went to Road America in the electric car, I got to go work with Justin Allgaier on the simulator, and he was really big. He was pretty, pretty solid road racer, and uh, I've been to Road America, and then, been in our car and so he was a ton of help and uh, just I probably sat on the simulator for four or five hours one day just making laps to Road America and uh, you know it really it really um, it really lays over when you get to the racetrack on a road course just knowing where you're at what turns coming up and what gear you need to be in gets you on starts you off on such a on such a better foot than if you're coming to a track brand new. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. But I, I, I would say Bristol would be one that would be really cool to run on. I mean, that place is just so fast. It's hard to believe they cover a, a half a mile in about 14 seconds in a cup car. I don't, I don't know what the trucks run there. Yeah, I couldn't, I, you know, I'm not even sure what the trucks run either, but... Um, it's fast. <laughs> I know that, it's fast. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I used to work, uh, a friend of mine I used to work with in Lake Models, he, he was in a, in a in, well, I keep wanting to call it Nation Models, the Bush Series then, and their first time there, said the crew member coming to the car, and, and they were two seconds off. He said, you mean two tenths? He's like, no, you're two seconds off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. He said, I drove it in there about five car lengths further than I thought I could. <laughs> I think it's Mason right there. No. It's not Mason? Mm -hmm. No. Now, when you were... Uh, did, did you go over with him about his Daytona race and everything? Mm -hmm. and, oh. Yeah, he, he got tore up at the end there. About 20, 20 29 laps to go, something like that. Yeah, it's about 27 because it, they had, uh, so he was on lap 73. What was his truck number? Is What was your truck number again, Mason? 35. 35. I'm sitting here watching the video from. Uh, oh. From, from that crash? Yeah, sir. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely, that was definitely the toughest hit I've ever, ever taken in a race car, but, you know, that's, I can't say enough about the work that NASCAR and Toyota puts into these trucks, because I, I walked away from it and, and wasn't even sore the next day. I was, um, walking around just like I would be any other day, so, I think that's a testament to NASCAR and, and the Toyota and the technology that goes into these race cars. Now, do you get any Toyota help from those guys? We do. Uh, our, our partnership with Toyota this year, um, you know, we've tried to run a lot of Toyota stuff in the past, in you know, the series and, and so on, but um, our partnership with Toyota this year is huge. Toyota is great about giving some of the um, some of the smaller teams a lot of engineering help and, and wind tunnel time and, and whatever it may be that, that the big teams have in-house that, that some of us don't. And, uh, so I think it's it's going to be a great partnership for us, and, and it helps us I mean, before we're going to the racetrack with with some engineering help and with uh, some help that we wouldn't normally have. Now, do you uh, do you guys get some of the engineering help at the racetrack too? Yes, I mean they, Toyota's great about working with us and, and with all the Toyota teams, and and uh, you know and having having teams like Red Horse and, and KBM in the Toyota camp is is great. Now, have you have you met many of the engineers and got, those guys? Um, I haven't got a chance to meet a ton of them, a lot of them yet, um, but you know, we we're only, only one race in. Um, but they you know that my crew chief knows a lot of them, and, and, and they're talking about them. Mm. Yeah, I know. Uh, we call him Rooster. His name's Mike. He drives the the bus for uh, Toyota for all the engineers. Oh, okay. We always give him a hard time. 
Uh, I won't say anything on public about it. But, but no, 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 Rooster's a good guy. We won't say anything to anybody about <laughs> nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, so who who do you find it's that you so far it's been the easiest to race with? Um, well, I mean, I you know the truck series it's, it's pretty it's pretty tough to say uh, just because I've always been there racing, but um, you know I haven't, I haven't really run into anybody that I that I don't like being around or, or that I don't like racing with for the most part in the truck series. Everybody, you know, everybody knows that they don't want to tell equipment and knows how much it costs. It's, it's a lot different from years ago running short tracks. Um, People, people aren't afraid to wreck you, and, and you know I think that's the biggest thing about late model racing is that you know they care so much equipment. But as you move up, I think people people understand that you care for equipment, and it's gonna it's gonna cost you because there are a lot of people at point racing, a lot of people have a bigger picture to look at. So um, you know they have a lot more respect for, for not only they don't want to tear your stuff up, they don't want to tear um, their cars up. But you know last year I think I think last year in the Arca series. Um, you know, surprisingly enough, and obviously he's been around a long time, but Frank was great to race with. I mean, we battled with each other, like I said, you know, fender to fender every week, and, you know, I don't, we really did never have an incident where we got into each other or, or anything like that. Now, are you guys running Toyota uh, TRD motors, or are you guys doing motors from somewhere else? Uh, PME, Pro Motor, builds our engines, uh, all of our Toyota stuff. Yeah, they're right down the street from Martinsville, ain't they? I think. Uh, no, they're they're in Mooresville. Oh, are they? Yes, sir. I don't know who that is now. It's just to get your wires crossed. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not unusual. Yeah. <laughs> Been upside down too many times here late this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, only one time. That was a good roll. What? Uh, what? Let's see how I can word this. If you were to pick a team. Who would you who would you like to be racing for if, if you were up in the upper levels? Probably anybody that I'll have him right now. Well, I mean, <laughs> if he had his choice. <laughs> I'm just saying, if if you had a sponsor that came to you and said, Hey, I want you to race in Sprint Cup, I've got forty million dollars to spend over three years. Who would you go to talk to? You know, I mean Obviously, you want to go after bigger teams like Hendrick or, or Joe Gibbs. And just, I'd say maybe, um, I'd say probably Joe Gibbs Racing, just because I do have a, a Toyota background. And and, uh, and they do have an availability for a fourth car. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's true, too. <laughs> And I'm and I'm sure they'd figure out some way to make an extra car if you came there with forty million dollars for three years. I, yep. <laughs> Yeah, there's really no bad teams that much anymore. Where it used to be, there was a bunch of you know uh, lesser equipment, but I mean all the teams are pretty got decent equipment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially I feel like especially since they went to the new the new college and six, that they they've even been more competitive and uh, fuel been tighter. So you know, there's not there's not many bad teams out there that I that I wouldn't want to get behind the wheel for sure. <laughs> But I, th I thought that, that would be a good question to throw out there. And it's always good to hear from your perspective, you know, a driver's perspective, why they would select a certain team. I mean, granted, we would all love to have that sponsor to walk up and just throw you that empty checkbook and say, here, go have at it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 the temptation is always there too to say, hey, if we got that much money, let's go build our own team, you know? <laughs> no, that's a big undertaking. <laughs> well, I mean, you can you can go and do like Haas does, you know? Wow. Cars go together, but they get their engines from... Yeah, but Haas wasn't much until Tony went over there. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> who knows? 811 could be the new big <laughs> deal out there, you know? <laughs> now, how'd you end up at the truck team that you're at? Um, well, like uh, three years ago when I ran my first ARCA race, um, they they came to us and asked me if I wanted to run um, at Salem Speedway in an ARCA car for them, and then we built a relationship with them on, on the ARCA level and um, ran full-time for them last year and, and did, you know, very well and had great race cars every single week and um, turned out 
now. They they ran a couple of truck races the year before with uh, with somebody else, and then so we talked to him about getting in the truck for for uh, three races at the end of the season, and we're able to work out a deal. And then um, they were willing to venture into running a full time a full deal with us, and uh, and move forward with that. So we are going to um, obviously they had a lot of trucks to buy and to build, and are are, the, are still put together right now. And, they're coming together really well. I'm really excited to get them. They they put together quality equipment everywhere we go. There's there's um, no question in my mind last year when I got in the car that, that it would be the nicest uh, car on pit road. So now, um, how old are you, mate? I'm 19. 19. 19. <laughs> you know. I was going to ask you this question. What would you tell tell the young kids coming <laughs> up? But I think you're already there. <laughs> uh, well, but I mean, you can always look back and say you've got these. We had how old was that guy we had on here the other day? Was he what five years old, six years old? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, he, he was, was a, he was a young whippersnapper. He would tell you if he was racing, <laughs> he'd beat you. He would kick your butt. He he was quite a character. Oh, he didn't lack confidence. Oh yeah, if, if if who was it we put him up with? Was it no, not Tony, but uh, was it Jeff Gordon? He liked or something like that? No, I can't remember. But he said he'd wreck him to win. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> so, it was so so. You having already gone through the young year stage and actually still part thereof. What would you give for? Uh, inspiration for the the new young guns that are out there, the guys that are six years old and up trying to get into something and, and hopefully progress like you have so far. What, what was the question? What would I tell them? Yeah. What would be your inspirational thing to tell them? Well, other thing to get lots of bucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously that you know you can't do it without that, but uh, you know I'd say. The key is not only do you have to have the driving ability and, and to put up the numbers on the racetrack, you have to be marketable and you have to be a first mobile person so that you can get those sponsorship dollars because if, if you're not somebody that, that a sponsor can believe in or that um, they think can, can convey their message to it, you're, not gonna, you're not, definitely not going to make it because you're not going to be able to pay the bills to go race. So um, I, think, I think the key in, in the sport nowadays is not only do you have to have the numbers on the racetrack, but you have to make sure you're somebody that sponsored can have confidence in that you're gonna that you're gonna carry their message well. I think. Cool. Now, are you running anything else besides the truck this year? Uh, right now, the truck's the only thing on our plate. Um, you know, I, I really want to get in an arca car for a few races and, and, and do some super late model stuff. We'll we'll probably run the derby, the snowball derby, and a super late model in the Winchester 400. But outside of that, we don't have anything planned yet. Um, I would like to get some more, we need to get some more um, sponsorship dollars lined up, and uh, I would like to go race a little bit more. Now you, got a, you, got a, uh, now you do have your own late model, you said? Um, yes, sir. I, I run for uh, for a guy out of uh, Louisville, Kentucky, finished down with Gardner, and uh, grew up with him. He did all my baby grand stuff, and has done all my late model stuff um, coming up. Are you going to try to do the Martinsville great late model race in October? Uh, we don't we don't have that type of late model, so we can't we can't go there in our stuff. So Mason, I, I'm going through your Facebook here. What's this picture with you with a metal one and another guy? What's this for? What was that? The I'm I'm stalking you on Facebook. We're <laughs> Facebook friends. You don't know that, but I'm stalking you. <laughs> um, you got a picture here with you with a with like a medallion hanging from your neck, some type of uh, from State 2011. What's this about? It was uh, wrestling. Um, I, I was in high school. I played on top of racing every weekend. I played three sports. I wrestled. Uh, I played football, wrestled, ran track. So um, wrestling was out of those three. Wrestling was my favorite, and uh, that was probably state tournament. Um, I had to guess it was probably junior year. I placed fifth state. That's pretty good. See, you don't have to brag about that. That way, there if you, you get in a fight with somebody, they're like, "Oh, he's a wrestler." <laughs> I'm gonna tell I you. Walked, I walked around with, with a lot of a lot of uh, bruises and scrapes on my face <laughs> all the time, so luckily it didn't interfere with race season too much. Tell me to go open up a can of whoop ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. What what else are we gonna grill him about here? We we gotta. 
We've been doing pretty know. good. We're up to over 30 plus minutes now. I don't know. Is your girlfriend pressuring you to, to get serious with her? Megan? Well, we, um, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm under the bus. Good. Um, she's actually going to come out and uh, hopefully get to spend some more time over in North Carolina this summer. And, uh, you know, I think that's one of the two different states. It's, it's not the best situation, but she's <laughs> in school right now. And um, so once she gets out of school, hopefully she'll be able to move out. Here. So, so will she be able to come to the track a lot with you? Yeah, she should be able to. Um, she got to come last year as well quite a bit. My parents, if I was on a different schedule at the beer sooner, she got to come with my parents quite a bit. So. See, see, now we'll get to go eat over his trailer and meet his girlfriend and then give, <laughs> give, him, give him his approval whether, you know, we think. No, we'll just say, did you about. get a ring yet? <laughs> Yeah, he was telling us something about some ring for some girl. I don't know if that was you or not, you know. <laughs> See, we're ready to start stirring up stuff. I told you. You know, you guys will fit in together with my family, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh. Hey, man, it, it, life is too short to take it that serious. You know, you, you got to have fun. you got to enjoy yourself. And as long as it's for a laugh, man, who cares? Yeah. That's exactly right. Class clown I N R. Yeah. So did your do your parents come to all the races? Yes, sir. And they're at every race I'd say since I was seven. That's cool. You know, the old saying is you a family races together, stays together. Good deal. Well Mason, do you wanna thank your sponsors or anything? You got anything you need to get out, uh, that I, we haven't already got out of you? I mean, I just like to thank you guys for having me on here tonight and um, getting to talk with you guys. And I um, definitely want to give another shout out to our sponsors, Call 811 Before You Dig, Diamond Equipment, and Bad Face. And, um, you know, if for anybody that's listening, um, they, can, they can Facebook stalk us too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at my Mingus uh, Facing or Twitter, Mason underscore Mingus. <laughs> Let's see, he, That's he, funny. He, if, I don't know if he's friends on, I think I'm more friends on his too, but if he sees us coming, he might run, you know? <laughs> but he don't know who we are. Uh, well. He may not, not even know my name, so I'm good. <laughs> All he's got to do is look on the thing on Facebook. Oh, wow. Well, Duh. <laughs> he might not be that smart. Oh, God. <laughs> Isn't he being nice to you there, Mason? <laughs> You want me to give him a Gibbs slap for you? <laughs> a Gibbs slap? You ever watch NCIS? No. I actually do. Um, <laughs> well, let's see, I'm lost because I don't. I, I did a lot. <laughs> That's a Gibbs slap, okay? I just did it for you. If you want to see it, you can watch the video on YouTube later. If you're not already watching it, stream it now. So, so what do you what do you think about the show that we've done with you here so far? Let's get a little critique in here. I told you we're going to keep you on for a long time. No, I thought it was great. Um, I'd say it's definitely one of the, one of the better radio shows that I've, that I've been a part of. Um, oh, listen to that. He wants to come back. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait. Now, remember, it's TV, not radio. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. I, yeah, you're right. You caught me on that one. <laughs> See, he wasn't paying attention. I just sat there and yeah. said, you know, watch this on YouTube. I say it all YouTube. the time. I say I it know, all the time. I know. I know. And, and it, it, because most places you get are nothing but radio shows. And we're still one of the diehards that uh, do it video and well, so even though we have a face for radio, <laughs> especially Jack. <laughs> oh no, he's a I call him. There's there's some friends of mine that they that's what they were. They did a lot of radio shows and everything, and they, that's what they always said. They've got a face for radio. Hey Mason, now who who was the first person you told about us calling you last time? Cause that had to have been pretty funny. It was actually my roommate. We were we were working out together on my phone started <laughs> and I had it on the on the uh, wireless speaker, so it was just <laughs> ringing through the speaker. Uh, Could you tell that we were scrambling? <laughs> I mean, a little bit. I think I definitely threw you off a little bit not being Mason. A, a little bit, yeah, a lot. <laughs> we were lost for sure. <laughs> it, um, it was pretty funny. I mean, we laughed about that for for a while. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Yeah, that, that was one of those nights, let me tell you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you off the hook. Go ahead and let you get out of here. Go yeah. do what you got to do. Yeah, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks at Martinsville. We'll be there. We'll be the ugly guys walking around. 
Talk to you later. All right, thanks, Mason. <laughs> that was pretty funny last time. <laughs> it wasn't real funny at the moment, but, but oh, looking back, it was gosh. pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, hey, it is what it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was definitely. I mean, it all worked out. Uh, <sighs> still, ch still stalking him. Or are you back in? Uh, I'm back. In What's Jayski got to say about the racing world well, here? Not, well, see, I guess Matt Crafton's going to stand by for uh, Menard. I don't know what uh, what the deal is from, with Paul there. Get hurt now. Oh, his wife is uh, going baby. to have given birth to their first child. Oh, who so was it that gonna... just had a baby? Oh, oh God, I could have told you oh, first. Oh, shoot. Uh, whose birthday was it today, too? Oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. And Jeff Burton's going to be in the car in the 55 or 60? No, not 55. Or whatever, the 66 car this week for the first time with uh, Michael Walter Brayson. So it'll be interesting. I'll see how he does. Now, if we, if we haven't talked about the NASCAR club this time, mm, have no, we? No, not yet. The Mid Atlantic NASCAR Club. You can read the it. Here. <laughs> Just borrowed it. That's, that, I tell you, that's the difference between the big screen and the little screen. <laughs> if, you'd, if you'd have walked in the front way, you'd have seen with the Lamont Snagma, my big screen. Mm. He's got a big old NASCAR game. It's, you know, the uh, 42 inch TV with the NASCAR game ready to go on it. So let's take a quick, brief intermission. what I call brief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's brief. <laughs> but anywho, I, I was thinking I might even call her. Oh, the girl that started up that club. Then we got Extreme Motorsports. They're going to be making their first race this year. The 44 that's, car. That's originally what my uh, race team was, was Extreme Motorsports. Oh, yeah? yeah. This one's X, X, X Extreme. Uh, With J.J. Yaley. I don't, they're not running a full schedule, but I think they're running... Like twenty some races, I believe. Let's see. Here. What about Kurt Busch? He's going to be running the Indy Five Hundred. We surprised calling me. Yeah. She ever been on before? She has. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't stay that staticky. Oh, it might have been well no, it was this one. It might have been a signal. You always call and say one order of pizza. Yeah, I need two pepperonis. She's not answering your call. Hi, you reached. I didn't reach you while I was reaching. You ever seen how many times on radio shows that uh, people will, they always do the crank calls and everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, speaking there, uh, oops, wrong button. So, what did you think about the race this weekend? Uh, I was hoping Tony would do better than what he did, but where did he end up? He ended up, I think, about fifteenth. No, I thought he, he, I thought he, he got, got he got top ten. Didn't he? he got up to the top ten, but the the last uh, pit stop, I think, got to him. Hmm. Yeah, I think it. It, it was pretty good. I think it's it's gonna be uh, interesting. I mean, I think the old Tony Stewart racing is uh, is gonna turn out to be uh, a neat thing. Sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. But uh, yeah, he was he was running pretty good. Just 
Yeah. Take Kurt was running, running pretty up. good too. Kurt was running top ten for his motor run. So I'm yeah. still, still Haas is going to be. A yeah, I was, I was real happy to Kevin Harvick. Yeah. Second time on race on the team and bam, in Winter Circle. Yeah. That's Tony, funny. Tony, Tony, Tony was a happy camper. He came up and congratulated yeah. him and everything I mean, else. You know. I thought it was pretty neat that they, they. Um, he was he was saying talking about you know because he won the last uh, Phoenix race last year with yeah. Childress and he said their setup was just completely different. But I mean, I, I think the car looked more dominant than it did last year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, I think it kind of lucked into it last year. They were running up front, but I think I forget what happened. I think gas mileage or something. They ended up yeah. hanging on for a win or something. Now this time it was definitely. That's oh yeah, the, that's the yeah. statement. That, that's a, that's the ass whooping right there. <laughs> it was freaky fast. Yeah. I love I loved it when who was it? Joey Logano was talking about that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you look up there and you had freaky fast in that car. He <laughs> says, "Man, it was." <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't beat stuff like that that pops up. You know? No, no, no. It's kind of like uh, I forget was it Harvick was running Daytona a couple years ago behind uh, Blaney. And they had kids eat free at, at, at yeah. uh, I was going to say Cracker Barrel, but it was at uh, Go, uh, Golden Corral. Golden Corral. And it's yeah. like, man, I'm so tired, I'm tired of seeing these kids eat for free. <laughs> <laughs> if we get a top ten, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's nice when the sponsors get involved like that. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, with uh, Ryan Newman with Quicken Loans, uh, what is it, three people or five people they go to and and do some special stuff for them. Yeah, they like make a house payment or pay their payments for a yeah. year or something, and then, uh, well, I mean, you get free blooming onion on Monday because yeah. it, it, because Kevin got a top five. It is neat when the sponsors get involved and there's that direct correlation to you know to drives business to the to the sponsors, which is, which is what it takes. Yeah. For quick and loans, I just hope it's not somebody that's got this big <laughs> right. forty thousand square foot home. That they paid a million dollars a month on or something like that. Right. That. Oh gosh. You talking? Paul Wolf was the one that he went home and uh, had a baby. Ah. Seven pounds. Ten oh, that's ounces. right. He's part of the the new. I remember they were talking about it on Facebook about the new uh, new uh, Wolf Pack member mm -hmm. they had. I was sitting there, Wolf Pack. What are they, basket, what are they talking about? Basketball or like, football <laughs> or something? And all of a sudden, I realized, oh, it's a they have a baby. So what else is happening out there? Um. Well, the new qualifying was pretty neat. Yeah. The, the the drivers. I didn't hear any. I didn't hear all. Of course, all the interviews. But I heard nothing but good stuff about qualifying. Yeah. I mean, it added some excitement to see what was going to happen. So I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. And especially the guys running out there, they're trying to cool their engines down because NASCAR, which I don't think they. Should let them run a, a a cold tank out there and cool the motor back down. I just think just make them at least keep most of the grill open, or you can't close up so much, or something like that. And that would kind of eliminate because they're just trying to get some tape on the nose to maximize downforce. Why why not just say, hey, everybody has to run race trim. And the, the, the simple thing is, is after you done qualifying and pound the cars, and then, then you know they're going to have to run race trim. Yeah, but in some of the racetracks, you're gonna have practice afterwards, so you there it can't be a you know can't be an impound race. Why not? I mean, they're changing how you qualify. This is a, be a different way to qualify. I mean, I just know. say no. Well, you can't say no tape because they all tape cars up differently. But I would say, you know, you just have to leave this much space open, then then you know. But I mean, each car is going to have a different grill setup too. I mean, the Chevys, the Fords. Right, but if area. you say so many square inches can't be taped up, then it's all the same. Yeah, that gets hard to, to get because then you're down trying to measure everything, you know. Well, oh, I'm sure they'll have a template. And if it's if it, it's they're good about a templates bit. that 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 have well, go or no go. It's green or red. When but, it comes up to the red, but it's but don't the thing go. is the grill is not as flat either. So if you got some roll to that grill, that means you can actually add no, more air. I don't, have think there's a, I don't think there's any roll. They don't like Asker don't like any roll too much of them. <laughs> We used to do late models. We were at Richmond International, and and our the at the Kyle where we used to have that thing go down to the air filter. Yeah. We'd all, we'd always had ours rolled. When we got up there, they said, "Oops, ninety degrees, no roll." <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I don't see it. It's, it's, it's not in the rule book. <laughs> I don't know if it was or not, but it definitely. Well, uh, 
We definitely had to take it off <laughs> and, and, and cut another one and put another one on. Oh, goodness. Let's see what else we got going on in the news today. Let me, let me do another quick thingy here. Another eight second commercial. Boof. Just have random people call in and talk about NASCAR. Yeah. Kurt Busch is going to run the 500, the Indy 500. Oh, I heard some rumors that they were talking about that. I'd, I'd still neat. like to see Tony try to do that double again. But I don't know if his, his leg's not ready for that, though. No, no. I don't know if it, it this, you know, he would, they were, there was something I read earlier that was talking about him when he did it. You know, he's done it twice that it just takes so much out yeah. of you physically. Well, you sweat your balls off. Mm -hmm. And anything else that's attached to you. Yeah. I mean, I know just doing 100 laps in a freaking lake bottle on the, in the middle of the summer, 10, 10 pounds came off. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So, anywho. Any, anything so, else you want to partake to everybody to learn uh, about? This says NASCAR is thinking about uh, limiting the drivers running double duty. That'll be interesting. Uh, you'll either have not enough cars in the field, no, or think, other drivers will have the people not show up, or other people will be having the chance to race. I mean, but the thing is, if, if trucks, trucks, unless you're like what top fifteen in trucks, you're not really making a whole lot. You ever looked at the purse? Well, the trucks. Nationwide still pays, well, it doesn't pay. Nationwide still doesn't pay that much. You might get but top Somebody's going to show up with a car just to get paid. There'll be a and car. Start a Parker. Yeah. You know. Well, let's go shopping for a Nationwide car. <laughs> Richmond will go out there. <clears throat> but see, the thing is, a place like Richmond, you got so many racetracks around here. Somebody's going to go find somebody and right. throw, throw together something and go out there and go have some fun. Well, I think it, I mean. I don't know, I think something should be done. I don't know what a good answer is. Because somehow Nationwide needs to stand on their own. The Nationwide yeah. series and, and drivers need to stand on their own. Yeah, well, that's, that's like Timothy. Timothy's leading the points in trucks, finished second at Daytona. Mm -hmm. So, but I was texting him about that. I said, it really sucks you got to be, you know, second place, but at least you're leading the points. Yeah, so I mean. Keep it for a whole month. <laughs> when's the last time a, a Nationwide regular won a race. I don't know. Um, it's been a little while back. I remember it wasn't really that long. It may have been last year sometime somebody did. Yeah, I'm sure. And, probably, and it's usually split up because Cup's at one place and Nationwide's at another. Right, most of the time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but I understand somebody wants to run against the Cup guys because they, they do gain some valuable, you know, experience racing against those guys. And if, if you can run with those guys, then you've accomplished something. Let's say the other point or side of the book or side of the picture, whatever you want to call it, you've got sponsors on your car. Uh, and if you can be running up front and you're having to deal with 10 cup guys racing against you and now you're back in the second half of that 10, you don't get as much airtime mm -hmm. as if they weren't there and you were leading the race. See, now that's, that's where, if, I mean, if they took and said, okay. I mean, okay, the trucks do okay. The trucks are more equal, I think. Well, I think they're all pretty fairly equal now. With the new, well, especially with the new noses and stuff but, the trucks got. But, I mean, yeah, if they sat there and said, okay, pick a division, race that division. Okay. Um. If you're going to do double division, then you need to do all races, you know, so that the guys that are out there that normally run like in the trucks or normally run in the nationwide, the sponsors' dollars are going to be spent better. Mm -hmm. NASCAR wants to keep the sponsors around. Well, <coughs> and, and I get that side of it. I mean, there's a lot of teams that are good teams and people have jobs because some of the cup guys are in there. But maybe limit on how many they can run, I, I think would be a good idea. Because I understand some sponsors who come in and they can't afford to do Cup or there's nowhere to put it. Right. And they can do Nationwide with a 
with the cup driver and then, you know, do a half where you have somebody that can bring somebody along. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I still look at the regular guys. I, I mean, I've dealt with sponsorships in the Nationwide Series and helped people out getting money. And because of somebody else that was running in cup, they wound up putting it on that car. Didn't get as much sponsor size area, but they got to have their name with that person. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is that the person that was originally getting that money, then all of a sudden, boom, it's not getting it. Yeah, you know, that's that's yeah, that's it's a, it's it sucks. Uh, and, and some of that that's business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's business. Are, are you done flipping the J ski? No, oh, I see Matt Crafton's gonna make a, a nationwide race this, in Vegas this weekend. Huh? No rare appearance it says. Oh, okay. Uh, this uh, this should be funny. I guess uh, who's the Clemens kid? Uh, Jeremy. Jeremy Clemens and Pond Stars are teaming up for Vegas. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be able to call oh, the car or what. Oh God! I wish I had known that earlier. No. So you got Jeremy's number? Yes. Call him up. Let's see. Vegas were best known today that they will partner with Rick Harris again at, as primary sponsor for Jeremy Clemens racing the 51 Chevy in Vegas. It'll be the fourth time the two companies have worked together. Okay, so it's not their first time. Not their first time being with Jeremy? Oh, correct. Since 2011. Target is expanding the sponsorship with Kyle Larson. Some people trying to run the new Dodge body that was approved, even though Dodge is not around. We'll wait a few seconds to see if, we, see if he responds. Yeah, because they're going to already be out there. That are on their way today. And that's when it's on. Yeah, it's only Wednesday, yeah, so they, they may I not believe, I don't know when, what the schedule is. And they might be, uh, they may have to be there tomorrow for the trucks, the truck and trailers. We'll have to uh, get Jack to research and maybe call. Get up with one of the guys at Pawn Stars and give a Rick Harrison and say, Hey, how's it feel mm -hmm. to be a sponsor? <laughs> yeah. That would be sort of cool. Yeah, or. Uh... We'll just yes. ask, tell Jeremy to tell him to call us. <laughs> <laughs> you say it real fast like that. You know? <laughs> hey, can you tell Rick to call us? Yeah, Rick, give us a quick chat. Yeah, they well the trucks should already be there because they're uh, they let the trucks in the nationwide trucks in eleven o'clock tomorrow morning. Let's see. When you said the trucks already there, I said, "Oh, the trucks don't race to Martinsville." <laughs> Stop by the hall. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right, Jeremy, come on, waiting on it. Through all that stuff, was it last year? Mm, I don't think so. No, when they 
popped it for the drug testing. That was last year, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't remember Jeremy being part of that. Jeremy Clements? Mm -hmm. it, it was. It, it, it was. He went through the thing pretty quick about like uh, Lee's. Uh, Lee did, and uh, so it must have been no big deal then. No, he was back with the same team and everything, so it was good. Well, this is going to be boring for people just watching us <laughs> gibber <laughs> away. Think, and, uh, right? You know, uh, I can always go do this. <laughs> I've shown you what you've heard the, the, the background noise yeah. crash. Yeah. Oh well, I think we have to give up on Jeremy. Yeah. Well, I guess we can call it, huh? I reckon. Let me send him a text back, Tom. Never mind. Well, we kind of had a slow show, but it was all good. Well, we had fun with Mason. <laughs> yeah, we well, definitely had I'd, the best with him at Martinsville. We had to plan a joke. Some kind of joke with, with me. If you got any ideas on a good joke we can pull on Mason, that'd be fun. Oh, it's easy. All you can do is find somebody that wants to dress up like a police officer. <laughs> I don't know. Let me just think, think about that. That would be so funny. What are we eating after a show tonight? I don't know. Well, it sucks sit there and send that many calls. <laughs> <laughs> That's alright, I wouldn't hear it anyway since I've got it on silent. So, so, what do you, so you like my little... Yeah, I've got to see what it looks like after it's compiled. In, in video? Yeah. It gets look big in the world. I don't know. I don't know. But anywho, thank everybody for joining us tonight. Mason, Mingus. We had a good time with Mason. Call 811 yep. before you dig. Yep, yep, yep. I'm just sorry that when people cancel, they cancel like at the right last second because all of a sudden they found out, oh, we got to hurry get on a plane. Can't do it while they're on a the plane. Mm -hmm. So Well, that's a good reason. <laughs> well, it sucks. You know, <laughs> but know what your travel plans are ahead of time. Yeah. Oh, God. But anywho. Right, so. We'll catch everybody next week. Next week. See ya. Bye. Make sure I grab the right one here. Oh, this is gonna suck. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Timothy Peters, driving the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. Hi, this is David Blenz, driver of the 33 NASCAR Late Model, 2011 Old Dominion Speedway Track Champion. Thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV. I'm Sam Hunt, driving a 42 car on a thing. Let's talk racing. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K&N Lady Eagles.